Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be on the Earth Titan in the Rift of Chaos dungeon. So, I've made a dungeon series uh, for Ash, Queen of Tides, Tulpa, all of those, uh, kind of explaining the mechanics of the boss. Now, I've done <laughs> multiple Rift of Chaos videos over the course of the past six, seven months, but I've never taken a deep dive into the mechanics here. So I wanted to do that today. Uh, because I get a lot of questions about Rift of Chaos, uh, you know, how to build good teams, how to progress. So I figured this guide would definitely be the most helpful. And that's what we're going to do today. I will say uh, on the uh, Discord, so I do have a Discord server. I think people should utilize this a little more. There's a lot of really great stuff in here, you know, to help new players. Uh, we do have some dungeon guides in here. We do have Rift of Chaos guides, which where I'll be posting this one as well. And I also do some account takeovers, which you can find in services. So there's a lot of options out there to help you guys. But I am putting this out there for free, you know, to try and help you guys develop uh, your own teams. And then you can always ask in the Discord for free as well. Okay, so let's get into it. The first thing that you need to realize about the Rift of Chaos bosses is stages one through four, this applies to all of them, are the base stage, okay? Nothing changes from stages one to four, so if you look in their mechanics in the magnifying glass, all of this is exactly the same from stages one to four. Then, from stages five to nine, they add an additional one or two mechanics on top of the original uh, baseline mechanics, and then from stages nine to 12, they add more mechanics on top of it. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about all of the mechanics, essentially up to stage 12. And then if you're below this, there's a lot of things that you won't have to worry about. Like if you're only on stage four or something, you can reliably farm something without having to worry about one of the type of mechanics. Okay. So I do have a sticky note here and we'll recap some of these things. Okay. So for the Earth Titan boss, stages 1 through 4, 5 through 8, and 9 through 12 all have different things to watch out for. It's basically 1 through 4 is the baseline mechanic, and then stages 5 through 12, they build on top of those additional mechanics. So the one thing that I want to focus on here is speed, resistance, and focus requirements increase as the stages also increase along with you know your survivability how much damage you have to do all of those things scale obviously just like all the other dungeons in the game like ash magisteria and queen of tides it's the same thing for rift of chaos so speed focus and resistance are usually the hardest requirements to hit because you have to hit those specific requirements depending on the mechanics on top of still surviving and doing enough damage from your damage dealers. It's kind of hard. So the thing that you need to realize is at stage 12, your uh, stat requirements for speed, focus, and resistance, this is what you need to try and hit depending on uh, the role that this hero is supposed to play and again this applies to all ROC bosses So all the Rift of Chaos bosses have this uh, requirement at stage 12 and all the way up to Rift of Chaos 3 It does not change once you hit the requirements for stage 12 It stays the same for stage 1 2 and 3 for this Rift of Chaos section so if you need to hit the maximum amount of focus for stage 12 and up, you need to be at 150 to consistently apply your debuffs. Now, this is situational in the Earth boss because he has a different mechanic than the fire boss and the water boss do, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But 150 focus is the baseline for all the other ROC bosses, and whenever you're first applying your debuffs, 150% focus is the baseline for consistency. Uh, so for resistance, you need about 210. This is for positive affinity heroes. What I mean by this is if you're in the Earth Titan and you're using a fire hero, 210 resistance will allow you to resist all of the things that the boss is throwing at you in regards to debuffs. So that's for positive affinity heroes. 
if you want to do a negative affinity hero you're going to need to be around like 250 resistance uh so that's that's pretty tough to hit the nice thing is is for the earth boss you really only need one hero uh to have high resistance and we'll talk about that when we get to the mechanics <laughs> and then the speed requirement is 225 speed your slowest person needs to be 225 speed and then everyone else can be above that but it can't be below it again because of a certain mechanic that all of the rift of chaos bosses have all right so those are the main speed requirements resistance requirements and focus requirements and it is something to note that the requirements of these stats here are reduced anywhere from 5 to 10 per stage. So if you go down to stage 11, you might need, you know, 220 speed. Uh, resistance, you might only need 200. And focus, you might only need 140, and so on and so forth. So if you can't hit these requirements right now for stage 12, and you're only on stage 6 or something, don't worry about that. It's, it's less than this by increments of anywhere from 5 to 10. All right, so with that being said, let's talk about some mechanics that the boss has here and why you should be looking for specific heroes. So we're gonna look at stage 12 because this is all of the mechanics you'll ever have to worry about. So even if you don't have you know, all of these mechanics covered in your current team, it's nice to invest in certain characters that can deal with this earth boss all the way up to stage 12, all right? So the first mechanic here is at the start of the round, he deals true damage to all enemies and applies stun that can't be removed to the enemy with the highest max health for two turns. Damage is increased by 100 if the enemy with the highest max health has stun. So this is the thing that you really need to build uh, someone in resistance for. So every time he's going to start with an AoE ability at the start of the round dealing damage to you, and it's going to apply stun to the hero that has the highest health on your team. And if he's stunned successfully, then the damage of this effect is, a, is increased by 100%. So that's really bad. You definitely want your max health hero to resist the stun, which is why the 210 resistance is really important. So your highest health hero on the team needs to have 210 resistance on stage 12 to really mitigate the damage of this mechanic so that's uh that's mechanic number one which i have here aoe damage every round damage mitigation and healing is kind of necessary for this because if you're going to be taking damage every round you need to be able to heal back up uh, and you can do this either through gear or through heroes in regards to uh, getting your healing back up but the stunning ability is something where resistance is a really big benefit to uh, tackle this mechanic. If you have your highest health hero uh, without the resistance requirement, you're not going to pass this dungeon. You will need to build your highest health hero with resistance or you'll fail. And it could be one of the reasons why you're failing runs right now. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is something that is unique to the earth boss and this is a skill called tide turner where at the start of his turn this isn't the start of the round this is the start of his turn so if you have heroes going before him this does not apply until he actually takes his turn in the round so at that start of the turn he converts a hundred percent of his defense so he will have zero defense and then put all of it into his attack so this is a huge amount of damage, right? The converted defense is returned at the end of the turn. And this is why the focus note that I had whenever I was talking about the focus requirements kind of uh, <laughs> goes into effect with this boss only. He gains 30% bonus resistance when an enemy applies damage over time effects. So that means, you know, he's going to go from 150 percent focus need to land debuffs up to 180 percent and this is only going to climb right because this is this is a static effect it stays there so 
if you want someone to apply ignites or defense down or something like that, you're going to have to build more than 150% focus if you want them to land those debuffs consistently over the course of the match. Okay. But the thing that we want to talk about here is the converting of the defense into attack. It it returns the defense at the end of his turn. But the way that this game works in regards to counterattacking is the turn is not over until all counterattacks have taken place, right? So that's why you'll see heroes like Rosalai in compositions to beat this boss. Rosalai is a very common character. Rosalai has a counterattack on her special ability whenever she's attacked by a Earth hero. And the Earth Titan is Earth. So when it comes to damage, she actually does a whole lot of damage based on this mechanic. Because if he has zero defense, bosses like this tend to have really high HP, really high defense attack, all of the stats. So if you can completely disregard one of those things, you're going to do a really high damage. So that's where a lot of your damage comes from, is someone from Rosalai doing counterattacks. The nice thing is, is there's plenty of options in the epic area as well that allow you to do counterattacks to deal nice damage uh, in regards to this mechanic where the boss doesn't have any defense. So that's another thing that you need to watch out for. This is where I say here, you know, this converts defense into attack on his turn, then reapplies right after. This is why counterattack heroes succeed. It's because of this mechanic, if you're wondering. Next mechanic that you got to watch out for is Colossus Attack. So this says when attacking, it gains counterattack that cannot be removed until the end of the round. Damage against non-fire heroes is increased by 100%. So he doesn't gain counterattack until he takes his turn. So if you're before the boss, which is why the speed requirement is so important, he doesn't have this up yet. But if you go after the boss, he will always counterattack you. It can't be removed. And he's going to be dealing 100% more damage if you're not a fire unit. And some compositions do use heroes that aren't fire. So this is a mechanic that if you have the speed requirements high enough, you don't have to worry about it. You can completely disregard it, and it is 100% the best way to tackle this boss. There's only one option that allows you to go after the boss, and it is viable, but I wouldn't say it's the most, uh, it's not the most optimal, okay? So if you hit the speed requirements, you can you can completely ignore the counter attack, which I have here. If you go after the boss, AKA less than 225 speed on stage 12, he will counter attack and most likely one shot your hero. So you don't want that to happen. So he has another mechanic called Earthen Realm. When an enemy heals other enemies, it reduces the healing amount by 60%. This is a really tough skill to kind of get around. There are a couple of heroes that do get around it. Um, the main one being Zitlin. Zitlin has a really great passive where uh, he converts damage that you took and puts it into a heal over time effect. For some reason, uh, the heal over time effects do not count as healing. It's not a burst heal similar to like what Mathasia or Florence would give you, right? So that is one way around this. But another way around it is heroes that have damage mitigation through shields, right? Which is why Brand is such a really popular character in these compositions. He allows you to eat up a lot of the damage just through his shield buffs where you don't need as much healing. So there are compositions that you see with Brand and Zitlin. Great combination. Zitlin keeps uh, Brand really healthy and then Brand just has the additional mitigation from his shield to keep your team uh, kind of at full health throughout the match. Or as we've already seen in this boss's mechanics, Oh, actually, we haven't seen that yet. We'll get to that. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> Let's just stick to counterattack and reduced healing. So if you're thinking of just bringing in a bunch of healers to keep your team healthy, it's, it's going to be pretty tough unless you have specific heroes. So keep that in mind. 
but remember the heal over time stuff does get around this effect so primal fury this is something that starts after uh round i mean after stage four i believe so stages five and up will have primal fury and it says at the start of round 15 gains berserk that can't be removed so berserk just increases all of their stats their crit rate crit damage all of those things essentially what this skill reads guys is at the start of round 15 once he takes his turn once he has berserk you're gonna die so you have to kill him in 15 rounds so you need to have enough damage so we're coming to the the final couple uh effects here so rock impact is another ability of his that says deals huge damage to the enemy with the highest max health if the enemy is controlled aka stunned it launches a bonus attack on the enemy with the lowest max health if one or more enemy enemies are killed it gains a bonus turn so your highest health hero is going to be taking this effect every other turn this is like on a one round cooldown. So when he starts, he'll do some big AOE ability. And then the next round, he'll hit your highest max health hero. Then he'll do some other effect. Then he'll hit your highest max hero. Okay. So this is another great reason why Brand is such a great hero in these compositions. Because his stat requirements are only really needed in two areas. Or I would say three. You need health, speed, and resistance. The reason why you need those three things, one, you definitely want him taking this max health uh, hit. Because if, if you do, all of your other damage dealers who have lower health won't get you know one shot by this. That's really important. The other thing is, is if the enemy is controlled, right, from this stun ability that we saw here that happens at the top uh, at the beginning of the round if you have 210 resistance he's only going to be hitting uh, the hero with the highest health once and that's it he won't hit someone else because they won't be stunned and if you build your highest max health hero with enough defense and health he's not going to kill him so you'll you won't have to worry about the one bonus turn so if you build a tanky enough brand and you have enough healing and resistance on him, this rock impact is something that you should be able uh, to handle with ease. So Earthen Beam. This deals damage to all enemies and applies stun bomb that can't be resisted to them for three rounds. When the bomb's duration ends, it deals true damage to the affected unit and stuns them. So this is another mechanic that all of the Rift of Chaos bosses have. And what this does is it applies this stun and a bomb in one thing. Uh, you can't resist it, so it doesn't matter how high your resist is, but you can cleanse it. That's why, again, Brand is kind of just absolutely fantastic for this. Because on a four-round cooldown, he will remove at least one negative effect on people. And this is the only negative effect that this boss puts up aside from the stun, which will only target the highest max health hero. So you do need to find some kind of cleanser. There are a couple of them out there. Uh, most notably is Brand. Another one that's really good and very uh, popular is Jocasta. You have heroes like Foodie that remove debuffs, um, you know, things like that. You have Celestial Kane that removes debuffs whenever he's hit. So there's, there's a couple options out there. They are limited, but it does help you get around uh, this bomb. If this bomb goes off, you'll most likely lose. So you need a cleanser as well uh, to deal with the Earth Titan. And then last but not least is this mechanic called Ruptured Earth, where it deals huge damage to all enemies and it gains attack up. The damage is evenly distributed across all enemies and is reduced by 5% per one negative effect on this hero. And you can reduce it, the damage of this, by 80%, which is huge. The thing that you need to know about this one negative effect is 5% is this does stack. I've talked about this in recent videos. This is why heroes that have Ignite are really good. Because there are a couple heroes out there 
One is an epic, most notably the best one is a legendary that they just released. But they put four stacks of ignite on the boss uh, on one of these effects. So that already reduces the damage of this big AoE ability by 20%. So there's two types of main teams for the earth boss. One is these teams that deal a lot of negative effects to uh, <laughs> reduce the damage that this boss does on this huge AoE because this is the main damage dealing ability. The other ones are definitely more manageable, especially with a brand shield or some healing from Zitlin or Florence or, you know, the light twin. There's plenty of things that you can do to get around the healing mechanic being reduced by 60%. But this is one of the hardest ones. Uh, so there's two, there's two camps, right? You have the one camp that is doing a lot of negative effects with Arlo or Andros or Matson you know, negative effect heroes, and then they build high resistance, I mean, not high resistance, high focus to deal with the resistance bonus from the boss. Uh, this can also be disregarded uh, <laughs> if you have an A5 Arlo, but uh, not many people have that. And then the other camp is the camp that actually completely disregards this effect by having heroes that have a three turn cooldown on Invincible, okay? Jocasta is the main one that can do this, but she needs to have her skill three booked up. So you will have to put some books into her. The other one is Celestial Cain. So Celestial Cain has this on a four round cooldown, which will not work. It needs to be on three rounds. But a team like this actually works because Aaron in this composition is going to be A5, and he reduces the ultimate ability cooldowns of Celestial Cain, which is a four round cooldown. And then uh, Jocasta, you got to play around with some things here so they, they time uh, evenly. It, it's a very interesting composition, but it is possible uh, to tune this. And there's videos out there that show this. But the other one that I want to show is, uh, if I can find it here, is a pretty cool composition with a hero called Punk. Yeah. So... Punk, this composition, is really cool. So Celestial Kane still has the four round cooldown, but Punk on his special ability, uh, he has the ability to reduce AoE abilities by one turn. And Celestial Kane's uh, invincibility ultimate is actually a damage dealing ability and it does AoE damage. So that allows his ultimate ability to be on a cooldown. And this is the team that I use for Rift of Chaos. Um, once, once you get up to the higher stages here, I actually need to use that composition because I need Jocasta in my uh, water rift. I can't use her here. But instead of Savannah, I use Zitlin because I use Savannah down here. Anyway, so that's how you deal with the last mechanic. So I have all of these written down on this sticky note. Like I said, I'm gonna have this in my Discord. I'll post it on the uh, I'll post it on the Earth uh, Rift of Chaos channel. I'll post the sticky note and this video. So if you guys want to join the Discord, uh, the the invite is going to be down below. So you can go into the Discord here. Uh, read the rules and then hit the check mark and then you'll be able to see all of these uh, threads so that should help you out a lot i hope you enjoyed this video you know if you guys want to see different team compositions and things like that you can definitely check them out in this uh, like floppy disk looking thing but all of these compositions kind of deal with what I just mentioned by going over the mechanics. But if you have specific questions on how to build teams, again, ask it in the Discord. Uh, you can ask it in the comments here. I'm not great at responding to comments on YouTube. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I got for you today. I hope this helps. I hope it, it makes more sense now on how to tackle this boss. And... Uh, yeah, if you need anything else, guys, just give me a holler, uh, and I'll catch you on the next one. All right, see ya.